Dick a little, little man and come up the stairs. I said, look, baby, you're going to fall from there. The police go back downstairs. He had a half a dozen steps and looked at that and said, are you going? <laughs> no. Not my job. You know, yes, I think it was yesterday or the day before, Tanner was talking to me. He said, Dad, God knows everything. I said, yeah. He said, if God knows everything, why is there bad people and bad things in the world? He created it, shouldn't it be good? I said, well, everything God created, He created for good. I said, that, that God gave us all a choice. He gave us our own free will. And he said, but if, if He hadn't put that tree in the garden of meanness, then they wouldn't be here. I said, but see, God loves us enough. He wants us to choose to serve Him. It's our choice to do or not to do. And uh, he said, yeah. He said, but Daddy, it would have been so much easier if He hadn't done that. Mm -hmm. So well, that's true. I said, it's just like, you know, if we tell you, Henry, don't do this, and you do it, and you get in trouble for it, you know, we told you not to. I said, God told them not to do it, but it was their choice. And I said, you know, there's been times in life that I've done things that ain't right. I was talking and I, I said, uh, somehow or another we had a little discussion of uh, people smoking marijuana and doing drugs. He got real upset and he said, Dad, that's under the blood. And I said, what's under the blood? I thought, man, you done done something wrong. I don't know about this. I don't know what's going on. He told me, he said, that happened a long time ago. I said, what happened? And he, he told me, he said, you know. I said, no, I don't. I really want to get this out of here. Now tell me what's going on. And uh, he told me, he said, one day I was over at Joe She was smoking a cigarette. She got the other one. I picked it up and I took the, I took the baby in my mouth. And he said, it was nasty. I said, good, don't do it no more. <laughs> He said, I asked God to forgive me. Why did you bring that up? I said, I did. I said, I didn't even know about it. <laughs> I said, but you know what? I said, God is so good to us that when we asked him to forgive us, it's done. Yep. I said, son, for the rest of your life, you can remember. That's under the blood. It's gone. God, don't look on it anymore. And don't let the devil beat you up over it. If somebody says something and you're in church or you're, you're out somewhere, it's not that they're picking on you. I said, and the devil would love to make us feel that way. I know I've been in church and God God be using the ministry and he'd be preaching and going on. And, and I said, man, he's preaching right at me. And uh, I get to think about it. I thought, man, I've asked for forgiveness of that. It's gone. I don't have to worry about that anymore. And, you know, I know there's times in, in my life when I don't, I, I'm going to assume everybody that they've done something there. They're not proud of it. Something that God deals with me about quite often is, is, you know, when we sin, we backslide, or we do something we shouldn't do, part of that joy that God gives us of serving Him kind of diminishes. We're, you know, we may not be as enthusiastic about going to church, or we may not be as, as enthusiastic about hanging around our Christian friends and stuff like that anymore for, you know, a little bit of time or something. I was, I was telling Tanner, and I, I have to tell myself this, you know, if I mess up, ask God to forgive me, pick myself up, dust myself off, and go on, and ask Amen. God, Lord, please, please restore the joy of thy salvation. Amen. Because that joy, I mean, it just, I love it when these kids come in here, and they got that joy just bubbling on them. And this morning, uh, Gracie had come in the bedroom, and she was so excited when we told her was going to church. She started singing and dancing around and spinning. I'm going to church. I'm going to church. Yeah. And, man, I'm like, oh, man, that just it, it gives you that option. Let's get up and go, you know. <laughs> uh, let, you know. Today, uh, Autumn, Autumn was wanting to come back over with us, but she, she got in trouble for some stuff. Her mom had cut her nose. She said, but mom, I thought church was a good place. 
She said, it is, but you're in trouble. <laughs> you know, you can't just, you know, which we should run to God when we're in trouble. But she said, you can't leave the house to get out of trouble, so to speak. But, you know, I was I was asking God, because uh, I, I didn't know Rich more than now. I've been studying and stuff. And, uh, Richard, I would go on to speak tonight. I said, Lord, I said, what are you going to preach on? And I opened up two different Bibles, and both of them opened up into Psalms chapter 51. And if you've got your Bible, turn with me to Psalms chapter 51. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Now, just, to, just imagine when God washes you of your sins and He cleanses you. It, it, like, take, if you can imagine being in a shower uh, all that deadness, that, that rot just washes off of you and it goes down the drain. And it's gone. You're not going to get that dirt back on you. It's gone. In Psalms 103, God says that He cast our sins as far as the east is from the west. Amen. Never to be remembered anymore. Not only are they not going to be remembered anymore by Him, but there's no measuring how far that they is. Nobody can measure east and west because no matter which way you go, there's still only further that way or further that way. And I remember I remember one time I, I had got into some stuff and God had been dealing with me about it. I came back to the Lord. I said, Lord, I've got to start back off here and kind of do the baby step to get back to where you had me. And he said, No, you don't. He said, I've washed you, I've cleansed you, I've placed you where you are. And I said, I said, but God, you know, how can you love me that man? He said, I love you that man. And I showed you when I sent my son to die on the cross for him. Amen. And I was, I was thinking, you know, there's been times in my life where I've had people who I knew were literally laid down their life with me or for me. And that's, that's an honor. You know, when you, you know somebody one on one and they know you and they're willing to go an extra mile. You just think Jesus did it. Knowing everything about everybody. And he said, I don't care. I still love you. And you're still good in me. Whether we choose to recognize the good. I mean, I've, I've been angry at people and I, I thought to myself, man, sometimes I just wish they would just go on and go to hell and leave me alone. <laughs> But I'm not, you know, I'm sure people thought the same way about me, and I thank God He had mercy on me. I thank God that when I was, you know, long, sharp, and doing things I shouldn't have been doing, that God protected me. Because there were times that I could have died and went straight to that. If I'd have died in that, I know where I'd have been. But He loved me in that. Yeah. He gave me free. Grace sufficient enough to bring me through because he had a call in my life. Yep. And one thing, I mean, I, I was called to preach, I think I was about 10 years old, 10, 10 maybe 11. I had already been dead at least three times before. I've drowned it twice, I've been electrocuted, I got hit by a car, couldn't have body back. Uh, my whole body they completely on fire. And God just brought me through all of that. Because yeah. he had a purpose, he had a call. And going through all that, we was Carl and myself and Mark and stuff we were talking earlier. I got to leave my dad to the Lord before he died. I got to leave my grandfather to the Lord. I got to pray with my grandmother, my mother. I also got to leave my brother who died to the Lord. And that is such a blessing. But he was talking about, you know, my grandpa showed me how to love as a man. Not to be afraid to tell your children, hey, I love you. 
Don't be afraid to hug your child. Don't be afraid to tell somebody, hey, I love you. My dad, he was in the Marine Corps for years and years. And daddy was real strict. But when my dad asked me, when I was 18, my dad had asked me, he said, forgive me. He said, I, I want you to forgive me for everything I've done wrong, for all the, all the stupid stuff in the past. And I said, Daddy, I forgive you. And, you know, I've heard this years and years. And so people say, well, I can forgive you, but I ain't forgive mm -hmm. If you remember it, you ain't forgiven. Because you're carrying that, that weight around your neck. And uh, it's going to rob you of blessings from God. Well, I remember after my dad had asked me to forgive him, up until the time I was at 10, I don't ever remember my dad telling me he was proud of me or that he loved me. But for the next 16 to 18 years, I can't remember exactly how long daddy was with us after that. Uh, there was never a time that I talked to my daddy that he said, I love you, son. There was never a time that my daddy thought I needed something. He didn't do what he could to get it. And he showed me that when he repented, he really did. He changed. He turned, he turned a, a complete 180 degree turn. And I said, Lord, I said, I love to be that way. And, you know, through life, I mean, we have people that do things, and we have people that, that we may not agree with, uh, like they're actionable. But don't hate the person, hate the sin. It's like my Pastor Rich was talking to the Lord this morning about the homosexuality and the murders and the liars, the rapists and all this. It's the sin. The person succumbed to it, but hate the sin. Pray for the person so. Because it don't, I mean, if Paul can get saved and him going around killing the Christians, you know, hey, who are we? So, all over here in, in the Psalms 51, starting verse 4, against thee, thee only, have I sinned, and done this the evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I am shaven in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Now, when I first started reading this, I, I, I really didn't understand what that meant. In sin, you conceived me. And I've heard, I've heard different explanations of it. But I started studying it out. And what that means is we are born of flesh. We are born into a sinful nature. Uh, when a, when a child is born, it's as, it's as pure, as innocent as it can be. And as it grows up, you can, you can never tell the child a lie. You can always tell it the truth. But there's going to come a time in that child's life and you're going to say, hey, did you do this? And they're going to lie. It's just it's part of their nature, part of their their core, so to speak. Their, you know, that's what that movement says, that you can save me and sin. You can save me a flesh. But that flesh is going to, going to be there. I said, there again, that's why God said we have to crucify the flesh daily. Sometimes that's hard. Sometimes it's easy. Uh, but I, I just wanted to touch on it real quick. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward part, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all mine iniquities. Now, this is this is something that I pray quite often. Create in me a clean heart, O God, Amen. and renew a right spirit within me. Because I'm going to tell you something. I don't care how much we try as Christians to be perfect, we're going to fail. And when we fail, we need to ask God. I mean, I can be, I repeat several times a day. I don't wait till the end of the day to ask God to forgive me of all my sins. If, if I sin and I, I know I sin, God will build to me. I ask God, I think, Lord, please forgive me. And now, everybody's different. I'm trying my best to get even from saying certain slang words. And I told, I told, you know, Margie and I, uh, 
Jolene and anything. All the kids were, were trying to get them to get away from some of the slang words and stuff. And they're like, but is that the same thing as a customer? Yes, it is. If you say it that way, it, it, it's, it's anyway the same thing. And, I said, and so the other day I said something. I said, I said, Tanner, forgive me. I said, I'm trying to tell you not to say these things. And then I said it. I said, forgive me. And he said, Daddy, it's okay. You can say that. You're an adult. I said, no, that ain't okay. Right. You know, I have to be an example before you like Christ was before us. If, you know, if we live our life the way that Christ lived his life, we'll be in the light of the world. Amen. I don't want anybody to, to look at me and say that I caused them to stumble and fall. That would just absolutely break my heart. If, if I said something or did something to somebody and it caused them to, to want to quit going to church or, or to say, well, you know, he's a preacher and he did it, then, you know, it must be okay. And if it's not okay, not for me or for anybody else, it would just, it would absolutely break my heart. And so, you know, I asked about the to create in me a clean heart. I want, I want a heart of Christ. I want a heart that will love everybody, not judge, Amen. but hate the sin. You know, I mean, you know, you can, you can condemn sin without forgiving a person. You know, because we all sin, we're all, we're, we're all infallible. But, we're fallible. And, but through Jesus, we can be made home. We can be made perfect. I had somebody, uh, I used to hear this quite often, I'm not perfect, I forgive. Or Jesus was the only one that's perfect. You know, no man's perfect. And I said, that's, that's true. But Jesus told us in the Word, He said, strive to be perfect as I am perfect. And so we can reach a point where we can go, you know, a period of time without sin. I know there's been times in my life where I've went, you know, several days that I actually did sin. And that's good. But I would like for my whole life to be that way from this point forward. And not that I would be better than anybody else, but that I'm seeking after God that much more. Amen. And the closer, I, I know, and, and I'm not just talking to the, the wilds or whatever, but I know that we as Christians, we want to be the best we can be in Christ. And we want to be alive. We want to, we want to help somebody. You never know in saying the right thing or even in just a kind word how much you can change somebody's life. I was in a situation one, one time where a man had, he had beat his wife the night before and I went, me and uh, another preacher friend, I went by to pick up his kids for church. And uh, we took them home after church. And we was standing there and we was all talking. And all of a sudden he got busted in the door. He was a man of the He just got out of jail. And he, he cut in. And he, he started screaming and yelling. And I just quietly had my voice said, Lord, what can I do? And he says, Big Saul. I said, hey, Steve. And then it just like a switch. He calmed down. He started crying. He said, I'm sorry I couldn't in like that. And he got saved. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I mean, I could have, I could have, you know, hey, don't come in here screaming in like that. But I wanted to do what God wanted me to do. I wanted to be where God wanted me to be. And so, creating us a right spirit with this. And cast us not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy way, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Now I'm going to tell you something, it's hard. If, you know, now I never, I never did illegal drugs, but I've been hooked on. I didn't have cash with the doctors. I've been in situations that I thought, man, I'm just going to go get drunk. I'm tired of all this, this pressure. I'm going to go get drunk. And I've been down all these roads. And I thought to myself, you know, how can I tell somebody else that God can deliver them? 
and let them labor if it hasn't happened to them. And so something that God's delivered you from, He delivered you from it for a reason. Amen. So you can help somebody else. Right. Because they want to hear from somebody and they want to see from somebody that if God can do it for them, He can do it for me. Mm -hmm. I know I've battled depression. I've battled wanting to commit suicide. Even to the point where I loaded the gun and had it in my hand, was ready to do it. The phone rang about 3 o'clock in the morning. Somebody called and said, God woke me up and told me to call you. And I got up. After talking and praying with him, took the gun, decided I was going to take it somewhere and leave it with somebody else getting out of the house. Got in the car, driving down the road, I guess they pulled me over. Mm -hmm. A policeman just to stop me to see what's going on. Mm -hmm. I sat over the gun in my lap. He never sees it. I don't know, I'm going down here to talk to somebody. And uh, so he said, okay, just be careful. You see, God wants us to share our experiences, not brag about them. Don't, don't brag about what you see in the end, what you do. But the devil, you know, I've been there. I understand where you're coming from. I've walked a mile in your shoes. And I pray and I ask God every day, you know, help me not to do these things. Help me not to, to fall back into that. Help me to help somebody else. Let me be a light and a witness for you. Because if you if you if God brought you through it, I guarantee you, if you tell somebody and you can show them how God brought you through it, it's going to give them hope. It's going to give them some life. Open. O oh Lord, open thy lips, and my mouth shall forth thy praise. For thy desire shall not sacrifice, else I would give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit and a broken and contrite heart. O oh Lord, but thou not despise me. Now, God wants us to come to Him. He wants us to come in humbly and truly. Come as you are. Come and ask Him to help you, and He will help you. Amen. Come to Him. He knows, he knows everything anyway. You know, I, I tell uh, Tanner and the kids, I said, you know, would you want to listen to that music if Jesus was here? If Jesus was in the room with you? Uh-uh. He's here. Amen. And, you know, I said, why do you think I don't listen to this stuff and watch the stuff I used to watch? Because wherever I'm at, Jesus is at. You know, I had somebody ask me one time, said, if, if Jesus come in your house, would you have to turn off your coffee table and uh, hide magazines? And I said, no. And I said, you know, that's just the way I am. You know, I want to be open and honest with you. everybody else because God's open and honest with me. He knows, he knows my heart. He knows everything about me. And I said, but when I do wrong. I ask God to correct quick. Don't let me dwell in the sin. And, and sometimes it's, it's easier said than done. So, sometimes God's delivered me from just like that overnight. And other things I had to walk it out. Yeah. Sometimes I had to crawl it out. Yeah. And if, if you're in that shape tonight, I want you to know something. God loves you. He loves you so much. And it don't matter if you were the only person on this earth to cry and if you were still not on that cross for you. I know sometimes it's hard to believe. And I've had, you know, people in my life that said it at one time or another they didn't believe in God, but that was mad at God for one reason or another. I had that. I've had people say, well, how can, how can there be a God? that would let somebody do this to me. I had a, I had a person ask for prayer for a job this week and uh, got on, on uh, the internet and they had, was giving God praise because they've got this real good job. They had offered them a, a job, told them when to start and everything. Eight hours after they left, their, left the office, they sent them an email and said, we don't need you. We've changed your mind. And they were mad at God. Why did God do this to me? I was praising him for it. Well, God shut one door, he'll open it up. And usually it's a better job. Mm -hmm. I mean, or, you know, God put me in a position one time 
I was I was working a job. I was making a real real good money, and the job I had before had started telling me I couldn't take off on Sundays to to go to church. I had a nursing home ministry before church on Sunday, and they said, "Well, you're going to start working Sunday morning." I said, "No, I can't do that." And so I just started praying, "Lord, I need another job." And I went home one night, and uh, my mom told me, "She said, David, you're welcome to teach your college." And I said, he did. She said, yeah, here's his number. He wants you to call him. So I called him up and he said, Dave, there's a company over in East Chattanooga needing a well. And uh, he said, I want you to go by there Monday and apply for the job. Cool. I'm looking for a job, you know. I put this other one. And so I go in and I tell him I'm there to apply for a job. And the man takes me in his office and he's interviewing me. He said, how did you know about this job? He said, I hadn't even put it in paper yet. And I said, well, I said, my little school teacher called me and told me the job's looking for a welder. And so I told my school teacher, I don't know him. And that's why I guess Scott told him. I said, he told me. And so I went, he said, you have the job. Amen. And so as I started to work there, there was a couple of guys that had worked at the church that got hurt at the pasture. They were going to church. And one of them come to me after a few months, and he said, David, guess what I did yesterday? I said, what did you do? He said, I went to church. Me and my wife went to church. I said, praise God. And uh, we was rejoicing. Another month or so went by, and another gentleman come to me. He, he said, David, he said, me and my wife said, the pastor come to our house Saturday night and talked to us. And uh, so we worked everything out, and we started going back to church Sunday. I said, well, today's my last day. He looked at me. I said, I said, God brought me here for a reason. I said, his reason's complete. Now it's time for me to go on. He just looked at me like I was crazy. Well, at lunch, the, the boss came out. He said, look, we lost a big contract. He said, I got to lay you off. And I said, he said, he said what are you going to do? I said, God will provide some of it. I said, God will put us in the places if we're willing to be here. You know, it, don't, don't, when you ask God to forgive you, let it go. Don't let the devil bring it up and beat you with it. And ask God to put you somewhere you can be alive. Because He wants to be you. We're all His disciples. Amen. And I know this man ought to be a shout. And that's the wrong case. God loves you. I love you. For church loves you. Pastor Rich, Pastor Perry, Pastor Carl, Pastor Peter, Mark, and myself. You know, we want to be alive with us. Not just. Us, but to anybody out there, you know, if, if we just preach for ourselves, you know, we're not doing the real love of God, work of God. But if anybody needs prayer tonight, we want to pray with you. If anybody's walking through something and they just they just need somebody to hold them up, we want to pray with you. Let's continue to pray for the outreaches. We've got the, the nursing home coming up. Uh, Pastor Shit said it this morning. It's going to be November the 30th instead of December the 7th. Uh, we've got November the 30th uh, for the nursing home. Uh, so I know the end of October, the first of November, most of November is pretty busy for the band, isn't it? Yeah. So, God's open doors. Praise God. Let's, let's reach out there and evangelize. Let's, you know, take it with us. Let's share it. Yeah. Share the love of Jesus. Okay? Lord, Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for tonight. Lord, we thank you for your service. We yeah. thank you for your word, God. We thank you for your anointing. We thank you for your spirit that goes with us. Lord, he leads us and guides us and directs us. Lord, we just ask you to, to watch over all of our friends and our family. Yeah. Touch everyone that's not here, Lord. Lord, touch those that are working, those that are that are unable to come for sickness or some other reason, God. Lord, let us be a light in this. And let us reach out and touch them this week. Let us think about all of our friends and our family. Let's pray for, for those that call ourselves our enemies, Lord. Right. Lord, and everything that we say and do, let us please be, be a blessing to you, God. Let us say what you have us to say yeah. and what you have us to do. Lord, go with us until we come back again at that point in time. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.
Amen. Now remember, yeah. Thursday night we're going up to Chattanooga. You know what time it starts in Chattanooga? It starts at 7. 7. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday we're going to be up River Lock in Chattanooga. Friday night, Pastor Rich, Pastor uh, Sean Cryer, and uh, Michael Allen. Pastor Michael Allen will be preaching. And I think mm -hmm. the yard of the skit. Yeah, Thursday night. Thursday night. And then Saturday, uh, the band's singing and, and uh, everything. Praise and the worship. Praise worship from the singing. Oh. And then yeah, Friday night. Okay, I'm sorry. And then Saturday, of course, is, is a trunk or treat. So, we love Saturday. Uh, there's a, three. I think it starts at three. There's a, there's a, three to five. a flyer out in the four in it. But, uh, invite some people. Invite them to go, you know, yeah. all, all three nights. And uh, let's, let's see God and do that. And then the second, y'all got another play in the video. Sunday, we're playing that for the BFW. Yeah, BFW. Yeah. 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 You know, so the following Saturday, we're playing the Lord. Mm -hmm. So be, be praying. I mean, God's, God's open the doors for us to evangelize yeah. and reach out into it. Yeah. And I want to see people say, praise God, hallelujah. When we say we, we mean the church. Yeah, the church, yeah. The church. It's, 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 not, it's not just one of us, it's the whole body of Christ. Right. We all come together. Yeah. All these kids are sleeping up a storm. All right, Char, dismissed. Thank you, and God bless. Yeah.